Welding Connections Welding is a process that has been essential to technology for many years now. From welding metal for the creation of the towering skyscrapers to welding the smallest parts onto a circuit board, this process has made countless technological advances possible. Weldability It is the ability or join ability of material to weld with similar materials without cracking. Many metal and thermoplastics can be welded together, a final material, but some are easier to weld than others. That's weldability. And factors affecting weldability. First, thermal conductivity. Second, melting point. Next, thermal expansion, surface condition, and change in microstructure. Types of welding. Arc welding. Arc welding is the oldest of these three welding processes. In addition, it can also be one of the most cost-efficient methods. In this process, the minimal materials and energy are used to complete the job, which makes it easier and faster to perform. However, it takes a lot of practice to create sturdy and consistent welds. Although there aren't many materials needed and the tools are relatively simple, it's important to note that this is still a practice that requires hard work to master. This type of welding is better suited to thicker materials. MIG welding, also known as GMAW welding, uses a thin wire as an electrode. That thin wire then gets feed through the welding instrument being heated as it travels towards the welding site. There are two main processes to accomplish this type of welding, gas or MIG and gasless or flux core. Gasless MIG saves money in terms of equipment but also raises costs in terms of supplies. The wire needed for this type of welding is more expensive. Gas MIG on the other hand is more complex yet the wire costs less and it produces cleaner lines. TIG welding. TIG welding is undoubtedly the most versatile of all these welding processes. However, it is also the one that takes the most time to master and it is the least productive of all three. That being said, it also produces the highest quality wheels. TIG welding is recommended for larger projects or those in which you need more control over the welding. Types of wheels Fillet wheels A fillet will two surfaces at an appropriate right angle to each other. There are several types of fillet wheel. Full fillet wheel is a wheel where the size of wheel is the same as the thickness of the thinner object joined together. Staggered intermittent fillet wheel refers to two lines of intermittent welding on a joint. An example is a T-joint where the fillet increments that are in one line are staggered in comparison to the other line. Chain intermittent fillet weld refers to two lines of the intermittent fillet welds in a lap joint or T where the welds in one line are approximately opposite those in the other line. And this is a T joint and this is lap joint or overlapping and this is the corner joint. So these are the applications of fillet welds in single or in double. So this is based on single and this is on double. Groove wheels. The second most popular type of wheel is the groove wheel. There are seven basic types of groove wheels. The groove wheel refers to beds that are deposited in a groove between two members to be joined. So this is an example of a square groove wheel, single V groove wheel, single V wheel groove wheel, single U groove wheel, single J groove wheel, Flare V weld and Flare V weld. So these are the basic groove welds. And for surfacing weld, these are welds composed of one or more strings or wave beds deposited on an unbroken surface to obtain desired properties or dimensions. This type of weld is used to build up surfaces or replace metal or worn surfaces. It is also used with square butt joints. Plug wheel. Plug wheels are circular wheels made through one member of a lap or T joint joining that member to the other. The wheel may or may not be made through a hole in the first member. If a hole is used, 
the walls may or may not be parallel and the hole may be partially or completely filled with weld metal. And for the slot weld, this is a weld made in an elongated hole in one member of a lap or T-joint joining that member to the surface of the other member that is exposed through the hole. This hole may be open at one end and may be partially or completely filled with weld metal. So these are the surfacing plug and slot welds. Surfacing welds and this is the plug welds made through member without holes. And this is the slot welds and the plug welds made through holes. Flash weld. Flash welding is referred to as a resistance welding process where fusion is produced over the entire abutting surface. Seam weld. A weld made by arc seam or resistance seam welding where the welding process is not specified. This term infers resistance seam welding. Spot weld. A spot weld is a weld made by arc spot or resistance spot welding where the welding process is not specified. This term infers a resistance spot weld. Upset weld. An upset weld is a resistance welding process where fusion occurs progressively along a joint of over the entire abutting surface. So this is a seam weld. This is the spot weld. This is the resistant spot weld. The flash weld. This is the resistant seam weld. And this is upset weld. Different types of welding joints. First, T-joint. A T-joint is formed when two parts are interested at a 90 degree angle with one edge lying at the center of the other. They are placed in the form of letter T. This type of weld joint requires the use of the fillet weld that is applied on both sides of the metal. Butt weld. Butt welds are created when two pieces of metal are joined when they are placed side by side in the same plane. It's often used for welding pipes, valves, fittings, and other. This type of joint is usually used for materials up to 316 inch thick. It's also not advisable to use on metals that will be in the future are subject to high impact loads. So this is an example of a butt joint. Next, it is a corner joint. Corner joints are some of the most common types in the sheet metal industry, such as in the construction of boxes, frames, and other such applications. It's formed when two parts come together at the center of a right angle. The two parts form a letter L. Forms a letter L and this is the weld or it is called the corner joint based on double corner joint. And lap joint. This type of joint is usually used when welding pieces that have different thickness. It's formed when two parts are placed over each other in an overlapping way. The joint can be welded on either just one side or both sides for more strength. This joint is widely used in electron beam, laser beam, and resistance spot welding. So this is the overlapping of two plates and welded. So this is called lap joint, edge joint. The edge joint is used to join together two or more parts that are adjacent parallel place. The parts can also be approximately parallel or they can be have flanging edges. The process welds the same edges of two parts. So this is the edge joint. And for the capacity of equal leg fillet weld, load capacity P is equal to 0.707 WL F sub V where F sub V is equal to 0.3 F sub U and it is the effective area. And for the nominal shear stress, F sub V is P all over L total. Nominal bending stress, F sub V is equal to MC all over I or it is equal to P times E or the distance from the load. Throat T is equal to 0.707 W. Allowable shear on effective area of weld. F sub V is equal to 0.3 F sub U. And the allowable share on base metal, it is F sub V, it is 0.4 F sub Y. Resultant stress, R is equal to the square root of F sub V square plus F sub B square or R is equal to F sub V times T E, where T sub E is the effective world size 
0.707T for equal leg width. So example, a 50 millimeter diameter solid shaft is welded to a plate as shown in figure. If the size of the weld is 15 mm, find the maximum normal and shear stress in the weld. So this is a 10 kN load and the distance from the load to the intersection is 200 mm and the diameter of the solid shaft is 50 mm and the thickness or the size of the weld is 15 mm. So D is equal to 50 mm which is the diameter of solid shaft. S is equal to 15 mm or the size of the weld. P is equal to 10 kN or in terms of Newton, it is 10,000 Newton. And E is equal to 200 millimeter. And let T is equal to throat thickness. The joint is subjected to direct shear stress and the bending stress. We know that the throat area for a circular fillet weld area is equal to T times pi d and this is pi d is the circumference of the circle and multiplied by the thickness of or the throat thickness it is 0 0.707 s times pi d and the size of the weld is 15 so 0 0.707 times 15 times pi and multiplied by d which is the diameter of the solid shaft which is 50 mm and the value is area is equal to 1,666 millimeter square and after that the direct shear stress shear stress is equal to P over A and P it is 10,000 Newton or 10 kilo Newton and the area it is 1,666 millimeter square 10,000 over 1,666 is equal to 6 Newton per millimeter square or in terms of megapascal, it is also 6 megapascal. And that's the shear stress. We know that bending moment, M is equal to P times E, is equal to the load P, 10,000 Newton, and multiplied by the E distance, which is 200 millimeter, and the value is it's equal to 2 times 10 to the power 6 Newton millimeter. From the table, we find that for a circular section, section modulus Z, is equal to pi t d squared all over 4 and pi times the throat thickness which is 0 0.707 times s times d squared all over 4 and pi times 0 0.707 times the size of the wheel which is 15 times the diameter of the solid shaft which is 50 millimeter square and we divide by 4 and the value for z or the section modulus it is equal to 20,825 millimeter cube and for bending stress bending stress is equal to m over z based on section modulus and the moment it is based on p times e or 2 times 10 to the power 6 newton millimeter and we divide by the value for section modulus which is 20,825 millimeter cube and the value it is equal to 96 newton per millimeter squared or in terms of megapascal that's 96 megapascal and this is the bending stress so the shear stress is 6 megapascal while the bending stress is 96 megapascal and for maximum normal stress we know that the maximum normal stress so maximum normal stress is equals to one half of the bending stress plus one half of the square root of bending squared bending stress squared plus four times the sharing stress square so one half times 96 which is the bending stress plus one half the square root of bending stress or 96 squared plus four times the sharing stress which is six squared and the value so one half of 96 is 48 plus one half of square root of 96 squared plus four times six squared or 48.4 and the total it is 96.4 mega pascal so this is the maximum normal stress next example two steel plates each 350 millimeter wide and 12 millimeter thick are to be joined together by welded lap splice the electrode used for the weld has a nominal tensile strength of 550 
megapascal. A. Determine the maximum weld size that can be used. B. Determine the effective net area of the fillet weld. And C. Determine the maximum load that can be resisted by the weld. So this is the lap splice or the welded lap splice and these are the welded portion on top and the bottom of the two plates. So we will determine first the maximum weld size that can be used and we have the maximum load P. So part A, the maximum size of weld, material 6 mm or more in thickness not greater than the thickness of the material minus 1.5 mm unless the weld is specially designated on the drawings to be built out to obtain full throat thickness. So the maximum size is T is equal to 12, which is the thickness of the plate, minus always by 1.5 millimeter. So the maximum size should be 10.5 millimeter. And letter B, determine the effective net area of the fillet weld. So the effective area of fillet weld and the effective area of fillet weld shall be taken as the effective length times the effective throat thickness. Effective length is equal to 350 times 2 or it is equal to 750 millimeter. So 350 is the width of the plate and we have a double weld we multiplied by 2. So 350 times 2 or 750 millimeter. Effective throat thickness which is equal to 0 0.707 T and the effective throat thickness 0 0.707 times the maximum size which is 10.5 millimeter and the value is 7.4235 millimeter and for the effective area we multiplied by the effective length times the throat thickness so 750 millimeter times 7.4235 millimeter and it is equal to 5,197 millimeter square. So this is in millimeter square. And for letter C, determine the maximum load that can be resisted by the wheel. We'll find the value for P. So considering the upper wheel only, P is equals to F sub V times area sub V, where F sub V is equal to 0.3 F sub U and F sub U F sub U is the nominal tensile strength, which is 550 megapascal. So 0 0.3 times 550 is equal to 330 megapascal. And area sub V is equal to 0 0.707 T, the throat thickness times L, or 0 0.707 times thickness, which is 10.5 millimeter, times the width of the plate, which is 350 millimeter. And the value for A sub V is equal to 2598 millimeter square. So we have now the value for F sub V and A sub V. Using the formula P is equal to F sub V times A sub V, P is equal to 330, or which is the F sub V value, and 2598, it is the area sub V. And the total P, which is equal to 857,000. 414 newton or in terms of kilonewton it is 857.4 kilonewton so this is the maximum load that will produce or the maximum p value